Good morning, everybody. So as you heard, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been one for over 30 years. I have also done some other stuff, for example, being chairman of Nokia and interim CEO of Nokia, chairman of ELISA, the, the largest telco in the country. And, but I've also been a tech investor for over 20 years. I have made a little bit less than 50 investments in, in tech companies. Five of those are recognized unicorns. So, so far, a little bit less than one out of 10 of these companies have become unicorns. But there's at least one other company in the portfolio that would be a unicorn if they would just raise new funding or do an IPO. So I'm a big believer in Nordic and Baltic entrepreneurship. In deep tech especially, in deep tech entrepreneurship, but also deep tech investment, it's very important to exercise clear thinking, have a clarity of thought and clarity of mind. And what has really bothered me over the last several years is how often we are surprised by an event that in hindsight was completely obvious. Let me just give you a couple examples. There's a country in Europe that since the 1970s has grown their private jobs by 43% and their public sector jobs by over 400%. I think we all understand that if this happens in a country, 10 times more public job creation than private jobs that country will run into economic trouble. Even if they start with a surplus in the economy, in the public sector, if the public sector costs grow 10 times faster than the private sector grows, then those lines will cross, just to a simple extrapolation. And this country was Greece, and it is still Greece. Of course, they haven't vanished, but they were close to vanishing. Because everybody was so surprised by the crisis that happened in Greece. Or think about a country that assassinated its former citizen using radioactive plutonium, polonium. It invaded one of its neighbors. It has practically eliminated free press. The judicial process serves the political leadership. They have made defenestration a trendy topic. They have changed the election laws in order to appoint a lifelong dictator. They annexed the peninsula of a neighboring country and so forth and so forth. And then we are also surprised by the war in Ukraine. And not just by the event, but especially by the repercussions of that event. What follows? What does that lead to? And especially we are unprepared for these events. Being surprised is fine if you are prepared. But oftentimes, of course, something that we prepare for, we are not surprised by. But let me ask you, if you think about the trends in networking, the tech trends, Moore's law and Metcalfe's law and, and so forth, and what you know about the quality and speed of networking over the last 50 years, what businesses have started as a direct outcome of that technology trend that we have all known about for a long time? So streaming, somebody thought but didn't dare say, streaming has revolutionized the music business, has revolutionized the TV, and movies purely as a result of that technology trend. But how many of you had thought about that, hey, if the speed and quality of telecommunications continues to improve, I think music will be revolutionized. How many of you thought about that before you started using it yourself? None? Really? Nobody thought about that before. Let me ask you another question. This 
exactly the same trend that we have all observed. It has created a new business domain over the last roughly 12 years that is turning over revenues of about 500 billion at the moment. What business is that? Anybody? Jan, what business is that? 500 billion, that's, that's a lot. It's a huge amount. He's telling me that it's not health, but it's, it's exclu exclusion is a good way to end up with the right answer if you first exclude everything that is wrong. But anybody with a proposal as to what that could be? Hey, good. Social media. I don't think social media is turning over 500 million billion a year. Gaming, advertising, I'm talking about something more fundamental. It's cloud services. Cloud services is purely based on the improvements in telecommunication networks or networking technology. Did you know when virtualization was created or invented? That's, of course, another component in cloud services that is fairly meaningful. Virtualization was invented in 1960s. So that has existed for a very long time. So my point here is that we are lazy thinkers. We are much more comfortable not disagreeing, not thinking about negative outcomes, being just part of the herd. And why is that? If we want to invest in high tech, in deep tech, we should really think. We should think about what does this trend, what does this new technology lead to? And we should not just think about the immediate outcome. We should ask ourselves, okay, if that immediate outcome happens, what will be the, the secondary level outcomes? And again, if those happen, what kind of impactful, relevant, meaningful outcomes could be happening as a result of them? So, Again, I talked about being unprepared. The war in Ukraine has led to an energy crisis. That's no surprise. It's a fairly self-evident outcome of that war. So that's a second level outcome. Okay, what does energy crisis lead to? What are the third level outcomes? Those might be the ones that will impact your business and your future, and you could be prepared, not in such a way that you bet everything that there will be a war in Ukraine, but you actually play a scenario game. For me, scenarios are a philosophy. It means that I always try to think about alternatives. So whatever I do, whether I'm making an investment decision, whether I'm helping a company with their strategy, whether I'm recruiting, if we're doing an M&A transaction, there's always the question, okay, what would be an alternative to what we are now contemplating? And if there are no alternatives, that's dangerous. Because it means that we haven't really thought about the topic deeply and with clarity. Having alternatives and thinking about alternative avenues towards the future actually means that you have thought about the topic deeply. And it's an important topic for you. And I have a very simple process for scenarios. So, first of all, I try to create those scenarios and 
we can talk at another time, how do you come up with those discrete outcomes or scenarios that you want to plan for? And then I ask myself for each scenario, what data will tell me that the probability of this scenario has changed? It has become more likely or less likely? And if I can figure out the KPIs or the data that will help me understand this likelihood, then I can take action to gather that data in a systematic, <coughs> systematic fashion. And then based on that, those likelihoods, I can assign my resources. I can, for example, create a plan for the energy crisis in Europe when I started reading from the news that Russia is massing troops at the Ukraine border. For me, for example, one data point was especially significant when I was thinking about the likelihood of war in Ukraine. It was when Russia started moving blood towards the Ukraine border. Because if you just have an exercise, you probably don't want to go to the trouble of collecting blood from all across Russia to move it to this border for an exercise. So that's just an example of a data point that is fairly meaningful. And as you assign resources, people time sort of effort into creating the plans for the different scenarios, you're always also thinking about new scenarios. So some of the old ones will become obsolete, they'll just cross them over, but you'll come up with new ones. And this will help your people to feel that we are prepared. And it will help nurture a culture where people are able to say that, hey, I don't believe in that. I believe that this is less likely than you think. And it's easy to say because it's only one of the alternatives. I think there's a, there's a curse of a single plan. If people only have a single plan, it's all they have. It's very difficult to deny that plan or think that it will not work because you have nothing left. But if people have been trained to think in alternatives, there's never a, just a single plan. Even if there's a strategy that you have agreed on and you're executing, but you have also thought about alternative ways forward, even if you are not focused on them. So there are tools that you can use to train people to think with clarity so that even if we are surprised, we will not be unprepared. Thank you very much.